Now, a winning season is something that the fans in Washington haven't seen since 2016. But anybody hoping to see one in 2020 must not be paying attention at all because Daniel Snyder's organization has been a giant mess and it's a franchise looking to move forward with a new identity. But as uncertainty of a new team name and a rebrand lingers, there is 100% certainty that when the Washington football team is going to hit the field, they're going to struggle. I mean, there's no denying it. Now, good news is Ron Rivera takes over for Jay Gruden in the role as head coach, which is an important step in the growth for this franchise. I do think if there is a right guy for this job, it's absolutely him. But unfortunately, now he's dealing with health issues, so he might be in and out of the facility as he treats his cancer. And running the football was set to be one of this team's strengths, but now the team has cut ties with Darius Geis for off-the-field issues, and then they released Adrian Peterson. So maybe that's a show of confidence in their young guys, but either way, this is an, a very ex, inexperienced group that's forced to run behind a disastrous offensive line. They don't have Donald Penn anymore, and then they finally ended the unhappiness of longtime star tackle Trent Williams by trading him to the Niners. It doesn't help. They also have the weakest tight end group in the NFL, which makes things way worse on offense. The coolest thing, though, is for that offense in the offseason, now the coolest story is that Alex Smith's road to recovery has landed him back on the team after a devastating leg injury nearly took his life. But he's not going to be the starter. That role, it, it does belong to Dwayne Haskins for the moment, but the cupboard is really bare for him to create his own success. And if Washington loses a bunch of football games as expected, the possibility of drafting his replacement becomes a likelier scenario. Now, the lone bright spot on offense might be that wide receiver Terry McLaurin had a breakout rookie season and looks like a guy worth keeping around during a rebuild. And then the difference is the defense, and that, that could be a different story for this team. Washington is strong up front on the defensive line, and number two overall pick Chase Young is in a position to be a force from day one and potentially win rookie of the year with double-digit sacks. I got him doing that exactly. Now, that's just about all there is to look forward to with Washington, because there's no way they win more than five games. I see them winning three. All of them being at home, one against the Giants, one against the rebuilding Bengals, and then I'll give them one revenge win for Ron Rivera against his former Panthers, which means it's a repeat 3-13 season for the Washington football team to put them in last place in the NFC East once again, looking for a new name, a new identity, and maybe even a new quarterback in the next season. This is a division that has a lot of other coaches that are now coming in, and one of those is in New York. They've got themselves another judge besides Aaron now. Head coach Joe Judge looking to change the culture in a turnaround season with second-year quarterback in Daniel Jones, who now has his first full offseason as a starter under his belt. So Judge, you know, a ton of experienced assistants around him might make things easier for that rebuild. The Giants plucked former Cowboys coach Jason Garrett from the unemployment line to call the plays on offense, and he has an Ezekiel Elliott type player to work with now that Saquon Barkley is his new running back. And then Saquon, he's a guy 4.6 yards per carry, continuing to show us that he's a generational talent, but let's just hope that it doesn't go to waste. Now this team's strengths, they are with running the football and stopping the run on defense, and Blake Martinez should only help in that area. The defensive concerns lie with their inability to generate edge pressure. It was a problem last year that needs to be fixed for the sake of a secondary that finished towards the bottom of the league in passing yards allowed. Now the Giants addressed their secondary concerns by drafting Xavier McKinney at safety out of Alabama in the second round, but he's undergoing surgery for a fracture in his foot that will keep him out. And then they drafted DeAndre Baker last year to steal passes from quarterbacks, not to steal things with a firearm. Now, more will be expected from rookie cornerback Darnay Holmes, who fortunately for the Giants has been the talk of camp. And personally, me, I've watched him in person for years, from Pop Warner through high school and college. And all I'm just going to say is this, I'm not going to be shocked if he balls out this year. It's not even an if, I think it's going to be when. And then elsewhere at corner, the Giants gave James Bradbury a three-year, $43.5 million contract after four solid but not elite seasons in Carolina. They will be leaning on him and Logan Ryan, who they just signed just before the start of the season. So honestly, I think that secondary unit will be all right as it is. I do sense some early struggles in an 0-4 start, but from there I see them finishing 6-6 six six with one win against each of their NFC East opponents. 
Being the Bucks at home on Monday night with 10 days rest is something I see happening too. So 6-10 is my prediction for the New York Giants in 2020. And unlike New York, Washington, and Dallas, the Eagles are the only team in this division that didn't go into a pandemic-stricken season with a new head coach. Philly was an extremely talented but beat-up football team last year that limped its way through the end of the season with four straight wins past the dysfunctional Cowboys to get them ahead in the NFC East and get that title with a 9-7 record. But the NFC East was the NFC least last year, and will that be the case this year? Well, we'll have to see. Jason Peters was not in the plans for the Eagles in 2020, but the injury bug seems to have caught up to this team again on the offensive line, so a pair of season-ending injuries to guard Brandon Brooks and tackle Andre Dillard means that Peters will go from being brought back to play the role of a veteran guard to once again being this team's left tackle on short notice. And now with a surprise move, the team drafted Jalen Hurts in the second round to serve as the backup quarterback. And that is obviously a testament to Carson Wentz's relative inability to stay healthy. But if he does stay healthy, Carson will have once again probably the best tight end duo in the league with Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard. His receivers are alright. Hopefully Deshaun Jackson can stay healthy to be the burner over the top and Jalen Rager was drafted to replace Nelson Aguilar. And this team felt confident enough with Miles Sanders as the feature back to let go of Jordan Howard. Now on the opposite side of the ball, Jim Schwartz's defense is built around the defensive tackle position and with five straight Pro Bowls to his name, Fletcher Cox anchors a unit He's got two other beasts in uh, Javon Hargrave and a healthy Malik Jackson. Rotating those three on the field could help the edge a lot, which, you know, the edge I would say has less depth and more age and injury concerns. You got Brandon Graham entering his 11th season, coming off a year with eight and a half sacks. And the other starter is the often injured 24-year-old Derek Barnett, whose injuries have been in the way of his first round pick potential since 2017. But then after those two, the names shouldn't really scare anybody. And then the secondary last year got awful, but now you add big play Darius Slay and then Nikhil Roby Coleman on a bargain one-year deal to hold it down as a top five slot corner. And I think that means they go three and three um, in their first six games with wins over Washington and Cincy and Pittsburgh. Their three losses being, I think, to the Rams, Niners, and Ravens. But from there, I see them going on a nice six-game winning streak to keep pace with Dallas. But then a tough loss to New Orleans is followed by devastating road losses to Arizona and then Dallas that make a Week 17 win against Washington possibly important, but in the end meaningless. I really wanted to pick this team to win more games than they did last year, but I have them going 9-7 again, which this time around means second in the division, and I think the offensive line injuries are probably going to be a reason for that. And trust me, there is when I say this, Nothing I'd rather be than wrong when it comes to this pick, but it's going to come down to how healthy the Eagles can stay and if they can take care of business in their division games. Now, it is clearly the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles at the top of this division. The question of who wins the division definitely depends on a lot of things like health, but coaching is one of them. Now, with only two postseason wins in his nine and a half seasons with the team, it was definitely time for Jason Garrett to go. So they do bring in a non-nonsense uh, non guy in Mike McCarthy to change this team from their old ways. But, you know, out with the old, they do keep some of the old with Kellen Moore sticking around, and for good reasons too. The Cowboys put up the most total yards and second-highest passing yards in an offense that was very heavy in 11 personnel with one running back, one tight end, and three receivers. Kellen Moore... It's already got a solid relationship with Dak, which is why I think those who wanted Lincoln Riley to leave Oklahoma for the pros to be the next Cowboys head coach and, you know, de facto play caller as well, I thought they were being short-sighted. But, you know, if you did get some, if you wanted something from Oklahoma, the Cowboys did go grab somebody there with C.D. Lamb replacing Randall Cobb at a fraction of the cost with even more speed and potential because he had a great, great season um, last year with Oklahoma in college and he should mess nice mesh really nicely with those two other 1,000 yard receivers and Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup now those three they're going to be forcing a ton of teams to be playing in nickel packages which should make things a lot easier for Ezekiel Elliott to bounce back from uncharacteristically only having four runs of at least 20 yards which was last year fewest among the top 10 rushers in the NFL now Zeke 
He's going to run behind a dominant run-blocking offensive line that also only gave up the second-fewest sacks in the league. But unfortunately, the big dogs out front, they will be without three-time All-Pro center Travis Frederick after his early retirement at the age of 29. On the defensive side, Mike Nolan is back in the league as the team's new defensive coordinator. His strongest unit, definitely that defensive line. Everson Griffin is now here. So is Aldon Smith on an extremely team-friendly deal, and he's ready to prove himself. So if those two can take that Cowboys edge rush to new heights, and you know maybe Demarcus Lawrence can bounce back from a very quiet year of just five sacks and 16 games, I think they'll be good this year. And uh, when you take those edge rushers and combine them with Don Terry Poe, Antoine Woods, and then third round pick Neville Gallimore plugging the middle and rotating should make things a lot easier for a weaker secondary that's going to rely on second round pick and a rookie Trayvon Diggs and then guys like Anthony Brown and Chidobe Awuzi to fill the shoes of Byron Jones who's now in Miami. Now safety another area of concern for this team which is why it shocked me honestly that they cut Ha Ha Clinton Dix before the season started but again, if the pass rush can do its job, maybe it helps things a lot in that weak part of the defense. Dallas does have enough talent to where their expectations should be nothing less than 11 wins and an NFC East title. Now, I don't personally see 11 wins, but I do see 10 and them winning and taking this division. A 5-4 and four start to the season features non-division losses to the Rams, Steelers, and the non-division wins over Atlanta and Seattle. And I actually hate saying this, but as things come down to the wire, I have the Dallas Cowboys edging out the Eagles with a 10-6 record and an NFC East title.